right. Here's a biography of a guy that you should know about. Um, I don't know where to start here because <laughs> the guy's name is Kazimierz Funk. And Funk in Polish, let me just yeah. make it very clear up front that we recognize that if his name were Kazimierz Kowalski, we, we might not be talking about him today. It is the Dr. Funk part that really interests us and, and kind of puts him on everybody's radar. But we're going to be talking about him today. Uh, brilliant, extremely accomplished uh, biochemist. Uh, nominated for the Nobel Prize four times, born in Poland, died in America, d- took part in basically every kind of discovery and investigation and just, you know, pioneering research just on a very, very impressive list of things. He's most noted for being the person who, and Dr. Michael, you're going to have to step in here because it's hard to find the right words. It, saying that he invented vitamins is not exactly correct. How should we phrase it exactly? He was one of the first to identify a specific vitamin. Here we're talking about vitamin B, uh, thiamine, uh, which is, you know, involved with beriberi disease. Uh, it's a newer degenerative disease, which happens when you are you don't have the right diet. The neurons in your body degrade, so you, you lose muscle mass, you lose neural activity. There's also in, in situations in which, you know, heart function is uh, uh, limited as well. And this was noticed in populations... In Asia, which were being fed white rice instead of brown rice, They're, from a standpoint of nutrition, it seemed everything was fine. They were getting enough calories, enough protein, enough fat, but they were getting sick. We're talking the end of the 19th century. And this is the moment when people started realizing there's something more to food than just calories, fat, and protein, uh, and the simple nutrients in a sense of minerals. So, you know, your metals and your uh, calcium, phosphates, etc., so scientists at the end of the 19th century started realizing there's something more there. And Kashimis Funk was the one who identified a specific molecule, substance that was in brown rice, that was not in white rice, which actually impacted people's health and present, uh, prevented beriberi, this neurological disease, this uh, health problem. This is in the second decade of the, of the uh, 20th century, by the way, 1911. He was born, just to get the basics out of the way, born 1884, died uh, 1967. Fascinating to think that some of the things we take uh, for granted today, the, you know, vitamin C, just like, as you said, the building blocks of food was were Brown. not identified until was James then. Brown, his godfather. Here we go. Here we go with the funk. It's going to be all over the place. Um, Dr. Mike, just a quick sidebar to this. He reminds me a lot of another polar scientist kind of under the radar in terms of the mainstream, but uh, notable because he's kind of credited with, again, not inventing oxygen, but identifying oxygen as a substance. His name was uh, Michal Sinjavoy. And so it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of similar here with Dr. Funk, um, you know, identifying something that was always there, but we didn't know it had a name and didn't know what he its role was. should have been was. elected to parliament, really, shouldn't he? Oh, thank you. No. With, with Clinton as my running mate. Yes, <laughs> yes exactly. George, yes. But we have to remember that uh, when it came to oxygen, this was a period of time, we're talking the 16th century, where they knew those substances were there, but they weren't exactly able to completely describe them, the molecular atomical structure, identify them spe- uh, concretely, you know, spread the papers around. And also have to remember, like, in the early days of science, after the Renaissance, somebody might have one idea, but if they didn't put it in a paper that was spread all around, they weren't really the the party that would be then credited with the discovery of it. So that's part of why oxygen right now is no longer something that's credited to a, a Polish scientist. Well, actually, John, can it, like, maybe you can give us a little bit of explanation here. because Is this a funk, is this a funk joke coming up or no? No, no, no. This, okay. is, a, this is a perfectly serious okay. uh, interruption. All right. Um, because... Okay, we've we've established that he kind of isolated or identified uh, thiamine or vitamin B. It's got a number, isn't it? Is it B12, is it? Well, right. the numbering system when it comes to vitamins, with that name and numbering, B3, is complicated anyway. Niacin. Okay, yeah. well, to one side. But, I mean, is it also fair to say that he actually kind of, kind of, if you like, invented the, the kind of labeling system for a whole group of compounds or molecules, which we now know as yes. vitamins? And the interesting thing if I may kind of say this, is that what, what is interesting about vitamins is that they are not 
That's they don't all saying. conform to a specific type of compound. You know, some of them are acids, some of them are kind of, you know, they're, they're, they're all various things. It's not like metals are metals and gases are gases. You know, vitamins are uh, an amorphous group of compounds. They're the unifying feature being that they are recognized as somehow being essential to a well-balanced diet. Essential and your body cannot produce them naturally. Aha, uh-huh. thank that's you. That's the whole thing about them. Because, you know, your, your body can't produce calcium. You need to intake that, but that's a simple element. Element. A vitamin, uh, the you know, it used to be a vitamin, basically mean that mean, that was a compound. yeah. Give us a quick rundown of the etymology, uh, the origins of vitamin. Uh, basically, uh, Kajimius came up with the name of Doctor Funk. Funk <laughs> came up with the name of vitamins because Get the down. first one he described was Get had up. an amine group. It was, was nitrogen, uh, and he thought all these essential. Is it fair? Can I interrupt, Doctor Mike? Josh, what do you think about the internal struggles he must have had over the issue of get up or get down? He must have really struggled with that. I think that, that this is a, one of those scientific <laughs> questions that hasn't really been looked at, you know, like sufficiently closely. I like think he had both down. sides covered. I, I mean, think he's he had, down and up at the same he time. Was. So you get down, get up, get oh, down. Oh, right. Get up. So there's a kind of an uncertainty about exactly. that. Dr. Funk's yeah. all over that. Sorry, Dr. Mike. So uh, what, tell us about Vita and uh, Amine. He called it like uh, Vitamines because it was an, he, there was an amine group on the first one he discovered. So, you know, nitrogen based. And he thought all these essential compounds uh, were nitrogen-based as well. Later, we realized him as well that uh, they don't have a nitrogen compound. So when he combined the names, he thought these were vital compounds. That's, you know, from uh-huh. uh, the Latin word for vital life, vital, vite. V- vitae. But do you say vital signs no, or vita sign, vit- vital signs? But I, th- I think the Latin pronunciation was vitae. Yes, because we have tape recordings of Latin speakers from well, Roman no, times. No, but they, I think they, she's right, though. It must the lingu- linguists can, can work this stuff out. That's why it's... Josh, do you figure uh, when, when Dr. Funk thought of this name that he felt good, just like he knew that he would? Um, I think he was in a cold sweat for a long time before yeah. he was able to come up with a, um, you know, to kind of get on the floor with say it. Say it loud. He's a chemist and he's proud. In Polish, we say yeah. vitamine. So... That just makes things more complicated. But the whole idea was like when they realized the, these weren't uh, nitrogen based, all of them, they dropped the E on the end of that name. So that's why we have the spelling of vitamins. Well, it's interesting actually to also to interrupt further that like the most popular high street chemist in the United Kingdom is directly related to this because, of course, it is this chain uh, known as Bootsy. I thought you were going to talk about the funk house. Collins. Yeah, Bootsy Collins. Uh, all right. yeah, not yeah, everybody's okay. going to get that one, Josh. Yeah. Sorry. Um, uh, where was I? Uh, Dr. Mike. Okay, so let's be honest. There's only so much we can say about Dr. Funk, even though he is amazing. Uh, incredible. <laughs> it, is, it was. 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 Sorry, he's very dead. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Like I said, look at his CV. It's incredible. Um, oh, the guy, by the end of age of but, 20, already had his PhD. I mean, it, 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 he, he was he a prodigy, to, obviously. Exactly. After, you know, his poor, it's a man's his, world, after I all. I mean, both of, both of his parents were doctors. They, uh, he was, you know, uh, a sickly child, but they still treated him for, in Germany. Then he went to Switzerland to study biochemistry, biology. Then he went to work in France, uh, Pasteur Institute. Then he worked, worked in Berlin. Then he worked in the UK. Then he worked in the US. Then he came back to Poland when Poland regained independence. Got a brand new bag. Exactly. It was awesome. All over the place. Uh, he, though, we have to always. Uh, I'd like to underline the fact that he always suggests that he was Polish nationality speaking, even though he could say he was German because you know he was raised speaking German. Poland was partially occupied. At that did he time. Not, the Germans got no fun. Did he not also uh, invent, design, and patent a uh, a machine for reproduction? What do you mean reproduction? Like, like a like a like a like, like a, a sex, sex machine. machine. <laughs> Like a sec- I'm not sure if that was this Dr. Funk or another Dr. Funk. I'll have to check, I'll have to check on that. It's too tempting, guys. Sorry, I just can't resist. <laughs> kind of funky, yeah. Kind of funky. Um, let's wrap it up on Dr. Funk, but, but I do want to talk about vitamins, Dr. Mike. Okay, so let's, let's, let's kind of draw a line here. Kazimierz Funk, Polish-born, incredible academic career, died in America, largely in, uh, credited with, as we said, identifying this substance. Uh, that we now refer to as vitamins. Oh, and by the way, serious question, Dr. Mike. Why does the naming scheme for vitamins stop at K? I think it stops at K. K, we can blame that on the Germans. The whole idea was um, when, it, when they started actually, and there's a gap. There's not like a, you know, a vitamin. There's no vitamin I, I H. Yeah, yeah what's, what's going B on there? It comes from the fact that the vitamin was realized that it, it stopped berry berry. 
That's oh. where the B comes from. But then they realized they were starting, very, very good. Exactly. But then they were discovering other compounds that were needed in health. And they would, you know, associate... Okay, so we'll call this Vitamin C from citrus fruit, maybe? Uh, Vitamin C, well, okay, that makes... That's ascorbic acid, but that was because it was the third one they found. Uh, So they called it C. But every time they found a new compound, they thought they would give it a name, but then they realized that compound was actually three different compounds. That's where the numbers came from. Uh, B1, B3, B6. And they realized that this compound that they named, you know, B4 was actually three different compounds, so they, they couldn't call it B4, they had to call it B678, and they just got confusing. And the Germans, the reason they called, they discovered vitamin K was because it was part of the uh, coagulation co- uh, cascade in the b- blood, which caused, you know, coma. Uh, it has nothing K, to do with the progression of the alphabet. Yeah, uh, they, uh. St- they want to start with the progression of the alphabet, but other parties decided not to. Then, Like I said, they decided, they find out that one compound was actually four compounds. So do the, do the numbers come from the size of the molecule then? Like, no, no. They, uh, it, your body doesn't like, suppo- downgrade them from no, one No, no, it was, it was the order of discovery and okay. naming, but then they did, when they were discovering and naming them, they really hadn't decided on the order so it all got blown out of proportion and vitamin k co- comes from coagulation in german so that's why it's k interesting and which where where was where was our our, our doctor born does it say yeah uh well he, when he was born it was the uh called the congress of poland is warsaw basically it was the congress of poland called in the russian empire this was in the era when I think you, he started. You could live in the same place, but like uh, be in like seven different countries throughout oh, well, your right. lifetime. No, yeah. no, no. But it was really just to establish which where, which place was precisely the funky town. What? <laughs> yeah, take Good me to there. Take yeah, did he did he ever go did, to Jamaica? Did, did, by the way, did, 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 um, uh, not sure, not sure. But he did wake up in a cold sweat on a number of occasions. We're sure of that as well. Maybe the vitamins helped out uh, and those uh, those nights too. Okay. Dr. Mike, I did want to get your uh, take as a doctor on the whole issue of vitamins. Can you settle something for us? Um, you know, supplements are a big industry. People always say take vitamin C in the winter. Vitamin D does this. Uh, are supplements a val- valid, legit thing, or is this a ripoff industry? If you generally have a good, varied diet, then supplementation is not necessarily. So, you know, if you're eating vegetables, fruits, meats, everything, you don't need supplementation. Uh the question is, when it comes to the fact that in our modern diet, there's a lot of processed foods, it's very simple, we might be missing out on things. We also have to remember that a lot of supplementation isn't coming from natural sources, it's just synthesized vitamins, which are, chemically speaking, a little bit different. They're absorbed differently, they're treated by the system differently. We're not exactly sure if their benefits are there or not. Uh, then there is, like, for instance, vitamin D, which has been a big topic for the last two years, Yes, vitamin D is produced in your body when there's sunlight and the right compounds are in your body. But, you know, living in the Northern Hemisphere, we're not getting enough sun, sh- sunshine. And vitamin D has often been studied when it comes to bone density. So you need, you know, several hundred units of vitamin D for proper bone density. But when it comes to vitamin D to uh, your immunological system, you probably need more than that. And also, as you age, your body generally gets worse at using these substances right? exactly so when it comes to vitamin d there's a lot of signs that you know supplementing it more especially if you live in northern uh temperate environments you need more but when it comes to other vitamins if you have a good healthy diet you generally don't need them so if you feel nice like sugar and spice <laughs> you're probably okay you don't need yeah. you know these these supplements no Probably no. Okay. What about, what do you feel about, like, there's a big market in the beauty industry for things like vitamin A, topical creams for your face, to reverse the signs of aging, retinoids, ran- various kinds of retinoids and vitamin A's? Uh, most of those vitamins and things don't actually get used when they're absorbed through your skin anyway. And most of those creams use uh, more hormones, placental hormones, etc., which make you look younger, but then once they wear off, they make you actually look older. So it's kind of like a give or take kind of thing. So mm. when it comes to retinols and vitamin A, it's a little questionable as well. So good. So good. So, I, we, we, I mean, you know, it's one of these areas of science which is not completely settled that, you know, we need more research and development or otherwise known as uh, R&B. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Count it off, Josh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit it. <laughs> 
Why did we not start the show like the that? The whole get up, get down. Oh, things, I haven't yeah. composed the theme music yet. Oh, that's right. <laughs> we need a funky crack ass com- uh, composer. We do. We need some funk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, like, I'll, I'll get really down smooth. on it. Don't you worry. <laughs> get up, Josh. <laughs> no, I'm going to get down. Get down. <laughs> Dr. Funk, Kashmir's Funk, the subject of our kind of sort of biography <laughs> today. serious look into He is someone, you, again, you should be aware of just for name purposes only, but no, kidding aside, he did have an extremely impressive academic career, and he's credited with, you know, pretty interesting, curious, nice trivia night kind of uh, information. Certainly you know, once he hit his groove, there was no, uh, <laughs> no stopping him. <laughs> It never ends. Actually, it's going to end right now. Thanks for listening, everybody. That's our uh, short history. Uh, sorry, oh bi- biography, whatever it was for today. Crackcast.pl. Check out all of our back episodes, and we'll see you next time on the Crackcast. Yeah.